He has a famous last name, but even more significant for UNC star James Michael McAdoo are the names that precede it. Jeff Gravely is here with a special friendship and how it guides with the Tar Heel star. Jeff? Well, Gerald, when he signed with North Carolina, it was his last name, McAdoo, that certainly caught my attention. But learning the story behind his first three names gives a greater perspective and the full meaning of James Michael Ray. James Michael McAdoo has a last name synonymous with basketball. His father, Ronnie, was a star at Orange High in Hillsboro and Old Dominion University. Ronnie's second cousin, former North Carolina All-American Bob McAdoo. Is there a pressure that comes with being a McAdoo? I personally don't feel that pressure, but then again, me and a McAdoo and people, you know, knowing about Bob McAdoo and my father, you know, there definitely is a high standard to live up to. Growing up in Norfolk, Virginia, he went by James McAdoo until his final year of high school. Right in the middle of his senior year, when he came to mom and dad and said, hey, you know, I want to be known by my full name. James, Michael, Ray. They were three of his father's closest friends. But I talked about him almost every day, and he's heard the stories about James and Michael and Ray, and he knows how close they were to me. You know, they're all great men that, you know, my dad was, you know, considerably brothers with. Ray Broxton grew up in Florida and became a teammate of Ronnie's at Old Dominion. In 1989, Ray died of an accidental fall at the age of 26. James and Michael McPherson went to Orange High with Ronnie. They were classmates, teammates, and soulmates. Even after high school, they always found time to spend together. Michael was in the Navy. Uh, in Portsmouth, and of course, James and I were at ODU together as freshmen. On April 28, 1979, Ronnie, James, and Michael were going to travel together from Old Dominion back to North Carolina. When James and Michael came by uh, Saturday morning about 5, 36 o'clock, and said, you ready to go home? I said, hey, you know, I stayed out pretty late last night, so tell my mom I'll see her next week. I'm not gonna be able to make it home this week. So James and Michael headed home to Hillsboro on Highway 58. About two hours later, a state trooper came and uh, knocked, on, uh, knocked on my dorm door and said that... I'm sorry. There's been an accident on 58. Michael and James were killed. And you were supposed to be in that car. I was supposed to be in that car. Yeah. I was supposed to be in that car. But by the grace of God, he had other plans for me. The fact that your dad was supposed to be in that car, right? that's a tough story for him to retell even today. It is. And you know, um, I've heard your story many times. And you know, I never really, you know, I've just sat and just thank God, you know, for not having my father in that car. Here we go. Ronnie and his wife Janet make the drive from Norfolk to every Carolina home game. They call it a dream come true to watch James Michael Ray play for the Tar Heels. And every time they hear his name, it's a reminder of a son and a father forever connected by three names. James, Michael, and Ray. Those people, you know, that knew all of those men that, you know, are looking at me and, you know, kind of give me a nod of approval. You know, it's a blessing to be able to carry that with me for the rest of my life. As long as I'm living and James Michael's living, their names are going to live forever. The McPherson brothers were laid to rest in Hillsboro, and their sister Kim still lives there. She keeps up with her brother's namesake by watching Carolina basketball, and the McAdoos always stay in contact with her. So even three decades later, mm -hmm. the emotional sting is still there for yeah. Ronnie, who lost three great friends. Mm. And you know that those three men will be proud of young James. No doubt about it. All right, very powerful story, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, great story, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. you.